Hello everyone. This video is just to get you familiar with the basic color wheel and to see the relationship between colors and how the color wheel works. So on this picture you see an umbrella and you see a color wheel on the umbrella and that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's first talk about the color wheel. In the color wheel you have your three primary colors. We have yellow, blue, and red. And those three colors are primary colors. You can't mix those, you just have to have those colors. Colors that you can mix are called secondary colors. The secondary colors on the color wheel then are green, purple or violet, and orange. Now let's look at the way that they are arranged on the color wheel. We have the primary colors arranged in a triangle and then the secondary color that they make is located between them. So if you look here at yellow and blue, the color between them is green because if you mix yellow and blue, you get the secondary color green. Over here, if you mix the primaries of blue and red, you get the secondary color violet. If you mix yellow and red, you get the secondary color orange. So that's how the color wheel is arranged. Now to make our color wheel umbrella, there are certain steps that we have to follow. So that's what I'm going to go over next. The first step will be to create the drawing. And when we're creating the drawing, we're going to be creating the color wheel umbrella first, and then we'll add some other details. On this picture, you see that I made a background. I have a little puddle under the person. I have a hill in the background, some clouds, and even some lightning, and you can see that it's raining. On this one, I'm going to turn that into a rainbow behind this person. So the background can be uh, whatever you'd like it to be, but we're all going to start out by creating the color wheel. In order to do this easily, I think it's best if you find something that you can use for a circle. Uh, I use a lid of either a coffee container or a creamer container, really anything, a plate. It needs to fit your paper though. So I have a 9 by 12 paper here and you don't want it to take up the entire paper. On the other hand, you don't want it to be too tiny either because you want to be able to have your color wheel and your person be the main focus of the picture or the focal point. So for my paper, this works perfectly. I'm going to put this towards the top of my paper. You don't want to put it in the middle or at the bottom because you won't have room to draw your person. So you want to put it pretty near the top of your paper and then trace around it with your pencil. Make sure you use pencil because we will be erasing some of these lines that we make. The first step on our color wheel, I'm going to be putting a dot in the middle and then I'm going to draw a line right through that dot. You can freehand the line if you want uh, or if you have a ruler or even just another paper that you can use as a straight edge, you can use that. I'm just going to use my ruler since I have it handy. Make sure you put the dot first. Once you put the ruler down, it's hard to tell where the middle is. So I'm going to just draw through like that. Now I want to divide up each side so that I make two marks that are equally spaced apart. So it's going to kind of make an X through it. So I'm going to put a dot here and here. And I can adjust these dots if I think that they're not correct. So if I look at the space between here, here, and here, they should be very similar. It's okay if it's a little bit off, but they should be very, very similar. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this dot and this dot. Now I'm going to keep going though. So when I have my ruler or folded paper, or even if you're just hand drawing this, you want to not only connect these two dots, but you want to keep going to the other side of the circle. So I've drawn a line through that. And then I'm going to put my ruler on this dot and on the center dot. And I'm going to draw to the center dot and keep on going. So no matter whether I'm using a ruler, a folded paper, or just hand drawing it, I'm not stopping at the center, but I'm going all the way through. 
and that will allow me to have three sections on this side and three sections on this side and that will be for the sections of the color wheel that I need. I need six sections for the basic color wheel. To make this look a little more like an umbrella, uh, umbrellas don't usually have this curve on them. They usually just are straight or maybe even curved in a little bit. So I'm going to be putting maybe a, a dot on each area at the end of the line. I already have dots on these but I want to put a dot on each area. You can even extend that dot out a little bit uh, because on umbrellas, you can usually see there's just a little connection here with the spokes of the umbrella to the fabric of the umbrella. So I'm just going to go a little beyond my circle. And then right here on the circle, I'm going to connect the two dots. Again, you can either use a ruler uh, an old envelope or even you can just hand draw it without that. If you're not really good at hand drawing just find something else to use to connect your dots. So I'm going to continue with my ruler and I'm just going around connecting all of my dots. After I get all of the dots connected then I'm going to go around and erase that outer circle. So you don't want to make your circle too dark to begin with because you will be erasing that rounded edge of it. So I'm just going to take my eraser and erase the rounded edge. I drew pretty dark so you could see it in this video. So you might still see a little bit of that line. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to erase it as good as I can and if I can see any part of that line, I'll make sure that later when I color that with my crayons that I color in the sky and you won't be able to see that pencil line that I tried to erase anymore. Okay, I got two more to go. All right, this gives me my umbrella shape. And this will be my color wheel. You can either trace that right now with a darker colored crayon or marker, or you can wait until your whole drawing is finished. I'm going to go ahead and trace over mine. Now I'm using a Sharpie. You don't have to use a Sharpie. You can use a crayon. You can use a different kind of marker. You can use this kind of marker. Uh, I just like to show you Sharpie because I want to remember to put something under it. I don't want to get my Sharpie marker all over my table, which will happen. This marker, the Sharpie goes right through paper usually and gets all over the table. So if you're working at school, if you're working at home, either way, you do not want to get marker all over your table. So be sure that you put something under that. I'm going to go over these little things at the end of these lines also. And I'm going to go over these lines. I chose to do this part first so that it would show up well on my video so that you can see what I drew better. All right. Now that I have the basic part of my umbrella drawn, I'm going to finish drawing my person before I color in the umbrella. So again, I'm going to switch back over to my pencil because if I make a mistake, I want to be able to erase it. We're going to make this person have a raincoat on. It's going to be raining. So just a very simple way of doing that is to make a line here and here that slant out just slightly and then a curve like that. My person is going to be standing facing that direction to the left. So more to the left, I'm going to draw second line, which is going to be where the raincoat comes together. Now you can put buttons on here. You can do this however you want. It, this does not have to look exactly like mine. But on my raincoat, I have a couple of buttons and then I have a little string here that connects the buttons. And in my raincoat, I'm also going to put a pocket. You don't have to have a pocket in yours, but I'm going to put a pocket on mine. You might want to draw some sort of a design on there. Um, you might want to color this 
a color other than yellow. It's okay, whatever color you wanna color that. Uh, mine was just yellow in my other picture. Now I need some sort of boots. So I'm going to draw down to make a boot. That's one boot and I'm going to draw a second one. This one is going to be just a little shorter than the first one because it's behind it. You can actually, you can make something like this if you want the uh, boot to be shorter and this to be the pants, or you can just leave it like I have this one with the boot going the whole way up. That's whatever you want, that's your choice. We're going to put a puddle underneath uh, the feet of this person. So I'm going to be drawing my puddle kind of randomly that and give that person like they're standing in a puddle. I also need to separate the ground from the sky. Obviously my sky doesn't come the whole way down and I want to show that it's raining. So I want to either draw a line on the bottom third or on the top third. Usually you want to avoid trying to break it up right through the middle. So for mine, I'm going to draw my line, skip the person, and then draw the line on the other side. So now I have this, everything below the line is ground. Everything above the line will be sky. If you'd like to have more hills on the background, you could add that like I did in my first one. Now I have ground, a hill, and the sky. If you'd also like to draw something else in the sky, you can. On the first one, like I showed you, I drew some clouds and lightning. Um, on the second one, I drew like the sun was coming out and it's going to make a rainbow with some bushes. So whatever the background is uh, for you, uh, I'll let that up to you, however you want to draw that background. Or maybe you just want this all to be a uh, sky later on. You don't have to have that be um, with clouds or a sun or rainbow in it. That's up to you. The next thing I have to do is draw some raindrops. So I'm going to just draw some little raindrop, raindrop shapes here and there. If it's raining super hard, you may have rain going uh, to the side. Mine isn't raining that hard, so I'm just going to draw some raindrops coming straight down. You can also trace these lines so that they all show up really well, especially the person, because you want the person to be the main focus of your picture. So I'm going to go ahead and trace over my person, whatever I drew for them, with my marker. Any details that I have, I can do that too. You don't have to do this all in one color. If you wanna use multiple colors to do this, you can. It doesn't have to be traced in marker either. You could just do it with a darker colored crayon or something or colored pencils, whatever you have to use. You can use whatever material you have available. I'm just tracing my puddle. I could even wait to do these, um, these little raindrops. If I wanna do them in blue, I could do that or I could do it in black, but I could do it in blue and just color it in while I'm at it. For uh, the grass, I could have done that in black. I did that with the other pictures, but I don't have to do that. I can do it in whatever color the ground is going to be. Now, once you get your uh, picture traced so that you can see it better, now's the time where you're going to add the color. But remember, we're doing the umbrella as a color wheel. So when you color the umbrella, make sure that you get the colors in the correct place. You may want to stop this video, pause the video, and look at it while you do your umbrella so that you make sure and get your colors in the correct spot. So you're going to want yellow, green, blue, violet, red, and orange all around the color wheel in that order. It's very important that you get it in the correct order. So I want you to just pause the video, finish that, then you can go ahead and add whatever else you want to add to your background so that your person and your color wheel 
are the main focus of your picture. I want you to have fun doing it. Be careful. Remember, craftsmanship is important. That is how well you draw, how well you color, and I just want you to have fun doing it. And hopefully you've learned a little bit about the basic color wheel and how it works.